Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video is going to detail how to, I suppose, construct a box and whiskers plot uh, through IBM SPSS statistics. And like in the previous video where we concentrate on how to construct a histogram, uh, this, particular, this particular video is going to rely upon uh, one of the sample data sets that comes along with uh, IBM SPSS statistics, and in particular the employee data set. Uh, just a quick overview again, there's a number of variables that we're interested in. Uh, actually the variables are listed down the columns here uh, within the data view window. Okay? Remember that within SPSS there's two views, there's the data view window, uh, which you can see is highlighted here on this tab down in the left hand corner of the screen. And to the right of it we have the variable view window where we define the variables uh, associated with the, with, the, with the file. Uh, what we're really interested in is we're going to be interested in uh, producing a box and whiskers plot for one of our continuous or one of our scaled variables, in particular salary. Okay? Uh, but we'll also be doing a number of variants where we will be drilling down into this particular into this particular variable uh, by looking at subgroups uh, based on gender, uh, and also maybe going a little bit deeper again by actually taking into consideration the employees, any particular employees uh, job category. So hopefully by the end of this we'll know how to create a box and whiskers plot. We'll know how to delve deeper into the characteristics of the plot or the observations that we observe within the plot uh, by, by looking at subgroups, in this case based off gender, uh, and also based off uh, job category. Okay. So but let me just define what a box and whiskers plot is. Okay. Uh, so I just have a, a, a quick uh, schematic or a, a diagram here that shows us what a box and whiskers plot looks like. It has a number of port important regions. It has a center box, okay, uh, which is blue in this particular case here. Uh, and it has a number of uh, a horizontal bar coming out to a vertical bar. This is known as a whisker. Okay. Uh, on, the, on the right hand side we also have a horizontal bar and a vertical bar. This vertical bar, this is also known as a whisker. Okay. Uh, and let's, well let's have a look at the, the, the main box first of all. Okay. So, uh, from a descriptive perspective with respect to the statistics, okay, uh, when we look at the main box, there will be a vertical line positioned somewhere within the main box, and this is the position associated with the median observation, okay, or the median value associated with your variable. Okay, don't forget that's the value that splits the data set up into two equal portions, where half the observations are less than it and half the observations are greater. Okay. Then directly to the left of the median value is the demarcation point for, I suppose, well actually this should be the first, the first quartile, okay? Uh, that's the value, okay, uh, that splits the data set up into a region where 25% of the observations are less than it and the remaining observations, 75%, are greater than it, okay? And likewise, uh, with respect to the main box, we have a bar here to the to the right hand side. And this is the demarcation point for the third quartile. In this situation, what we know about the third quartile is that 75% of the observations will be less than that value, with the remainder, 25%, being greater than that value. Now, it is possible that your data set will have outliers in it, and there's a number of strategies for defining a an outlier, uh, depending on whether it's a lower bound outlier or whether it's an upper bound outlier. Uh, typically, it is the for uh, for lower bound outliers, the demarcation point for where outliers reside is typically uh, the first quartile minus 1.5 times the interquartile range, uh, and for the upper bound outliers, it typically resides at the position which is the third quartile plus 1.5 times the interquartile range. Okay, and any value that's greater than this upper bound will be s uh, signified or displayed using a dot. These dots indicate that these specific values are, are characterized as being unusual with respect to the, the rest of the data set or being characterized as outliers. In this case, these dots here would represent that there's one, two, three, four observations in the data set that could be characterized as upper bound outliers. And similarly on the left hand side, you can see here that we have two dots, one, two. Uh, if this was a real data set, this particular box plot is saying to me that there is possibly that there is two values that could be classified as what's known as the lower bound outliers. Okay? The, the most extreme points to the left hand side okay, is typically the smallest value in the data set, and the most extreme points to the right hand side is the largest value. Okay? 
And just keep in mind that when there are no outliers, uh, the largest value will be here, will be at the upper bound position, uh, and the smallest value will be here at the lower bound position. Okay. So with that in mind, and uh, I suppose hopefully this helped with our understanding of actually what a box and whiskers plot is, and what are the important, I suppose, uh, the important characteristics and points within the plot. And uh, let's just go back to SPSS and let's construct a box and whiskers plot uh, for the job category, not the job category, for the salary variable. Okay. Like in our previous videos, uh, all of the graphs are, are I suppose, detailed uh, under the drop down menu uh, that's titled graphs. Okay, if I click on that. We can go into Chart Builder. Okay, this is the newer uh, way of creating creating charts. But I'm going to just uh, concentrate on the legacy dialogues. Okay, uh, because that actually has a very clear option here, which is to produce a box plot. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on box plot. Okay, uh, I'm going to just click on a ask for a simple box plot. I'm just going to hit define. Uh, I've already done this already. Okay, so let me just get rid of all the variables. The variable that I wanted to create the box plot for is current salary. Okay. Uh, and then what we actually have to do is we have to ask, we have to provide a category axis. Uh, in this situation here, okay, I possibly would like to do a box and whiskers plot for for all for all of the for all of the uh, the variable, okay. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't have a category axis or a variable that actually has uh, the same value down it. Maybe I'll actually just construct one of them. I'll just go to transform compute variable. Uh, I'm just going to call this company, okay. And what I'm going to say is company is just simply equal to the numeric value one, okay. And that's going to create the company variable. What you can actually see is that we have a, a one down here, okay. So now what I'm saying is that every single observation, yeah, okay, is falling into this single company that's associated with this particular data set. So let me do this again. So we go to graphs, we go to legacy dialogues, we go to box plot. I'll look for a simple box plot, and I want to do a box plot for current salary, okay, uh, based off all of the observations, and all the observations fall into one single company that's coded as one, so I'll put the category axis inside here, and then what I'll do is I'll hit OK, and what that'll do for us is it generates a, it generates a box and whiskers plot. Now, the way we had defined it, we had defined the box and whiskers plot horizontally, okay, with to the right hand side is the largest, larger values, uh, uh, larger observations, and to the left hand side are the smaller observations. Uh, SPSS here by default has 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 output the the box and whiskers plot uh, as a vertical uh, box and whisker. Okay, just keep in mind that the larger values are on the top of the plot, with the smaller values on the bottom of the plot. Okay. Uh, one of the once again, what we what might what would probably be nice to add onto this is a title onto the graph. So if I double click the chart, it brings us into chart editor mode. If I go to options, title, uh, I can actually add a title into this particular particular chart, and maybe I'll say this is a box and whiskers uh, plot, uh, and it's for the salary distribution. So it's another way of actually looking at the salaries uh, represented through this particular box and whiskers, uh, this pr particular box and whiskers uh, uh, idea. Okay. Uh, you can see actually in this case, just a little bit of analysis. You can see that uh, the the median value, this bold line within the box, uh, seems to be in around just a little bit above twenty five thousand euros. Okay. Uh, the first quartile seems to be just slightly below 25,000 euros, uh, and the third quartile here seems to be halfway between 25 and 50,000 euros. Okay, not really much detail can we get here based off the the I suppose the indexes here on this particular vertical axis. Yeah. Okay. But what is very very obvious is that there has been a significant number uh, of observations, and you can see they're all labelled here 233. 233 is the 233rd observation in my data set. Okay, so if I go down to the row 223, this particular observation here, this male that was born in 1944, who's a manager, who's on 135,000 euros. Okay, he's being classified. He's being classified as. Oops, where's this gone to? He's being classified as an outlier. Okay. 
So this particular person here has been classified as an outlier. And you can actually see that there's a significant number of outliers, yeah, that are above this particular whisker here, yeah. Okay? This whisker representing the third quartile. This whisker here representing, I suppose, oh sorry, this here representing the third quartile. Any mark beyond this whisker being identified as an upper bound outlier. Any dot below or star below this particular line here being, rep being uh, uh, representative of a lower bound outliers. And you actually see that there's no values, there's no stars uh, that are listed.